I'm Effie Parks. Welcome to Once Upon a Jane, the podcast. This is a place I created for us to connect and share the stories of our not so typical lives. Raising kids who are born with rare genetic syndromes and other types of disabilities can feel pretty isolating. What I know for sure is that when we can hear the triumphs and challenges from others who get it, we can find a lot more laughter, a lot more hope, and feel a lot less alone. I believe there are some magical healing powers that can happen for all of us through sharing our stories, and I'll take all the help I can get. Once Upon a Gene is proud to be part of Bloodstream Media. Living in a family affected by rare and chronic illness can be isolating, and sometimes the best medicine is connecting to the voices of people who share your experience. This is why Bloodstream Media produces podcasts, blogs, and other forms of content for patients, families, and clinicians impacted by rare and chronic diseases. Visit bloodstreammedia.com to learn more. Hi there, and welcome to the show. Once a month, I release this extra special episode in a series I call A Rare Collection. It features a few people from the rare disease community, each telling a true story with the same theme. I'm super excited to present the 17th episode in the storytelling series. I've always been moved by storytelling, and I believe there is so much power in them for both the listener and the storyteller. I'm the luckiest podcaster ever in that this is what I get to do for fun, passion, and purpose. Today's episode is a little different, and it's featuring two people this time. Friends. The kinds of friends who were <laughs> with us before we had our rare disease kiddos and figured out how to weather the hurricane alongside us and didn't evacuate. The theme for the show for today is batten down the hatches. The storytellers have the utmost freedom to be creative and to take the theme wherever their heart desires. Here's a story from my best friend, Kelly. Hi, all. I am Kelly. I am one of Effie's very best friends, and I know that there are so many of us that like to take that title, but today I win because I'm here. And I want to talk to you about what it looks like to be her friend through her journey with rare disease. Like so many people, I have spent the majority of my life completely unaffected by rare disease, or honestly, any disease, rare or common. In late 2015, my magnificent friend, Effie, became pregnant. We had been best friends since 2002, since the days that we used to steal cheese fries off guest plates and drink margaritas for eight hours before we would go downtown and drink for four more. I hosted her baby shower and could not wait for my best friend's baby to be born. I wanted her to be a mama so badly. I had a three-year-old and a one-year-old at the time and knew they would be fast friends going to summer camps and I pictured them you know, behind our boat, tubing and screaming out of fear and giggling until their cheeks hurt. On June 30th, Ford made his presence known. He was small and mighty, but I think a lot of us knew something wasn't quite right. Over the next few months, he was placed on a feeding tube and making regular visits to the ER. And Effie was angry. She had done her hard. She had gone through her stuff. And she was mad. And in the beginning, when we would have girls weekends, she didn't necessarily want to talk about it. I would ask ridiculous questions, which I thought were well thought out, but in reality made me sound ignorant, which I was. And as her friend, I didn't know how to support her. And the amount of support and understanding I did give was poor. Honestly, outside of sending meals, I had no idea what she needed. I would ask, like we all do in any situation when there's anybody out there that might need something, what can I do to help? But when you're spiraling with rare disease or depression or anything, you've been in the same leggings for four days. You don't know what day it is, let alone what you want from your friend that's 300 miles away. She deserved more from me. She deserved empathy and an advocate on her journey moving forward. And she really deserved for me to be the friend she needed because she had always been that friend to me and, and I wasn't owning up to my side of the bargain there. In October, 2017, there was a diagnosis for Ford, CTNNB1. My first thought was, what in the hell is that? What does that mean? Turns out, pretty much no one had any answers for those questions. 
I obviously put my doctor cap on and Googled for days. I referred to myself as Dr. Vanderworker while talking to our other best friend, Dr. Petty, because we were basically doctors. We talked amongst ourselves. We talked behind Effie's back like every girl gang does when one of the gang members is struggling. Now what? How do we support her now? What, what do we do? And in these moments of certainty, you can see your friends rise up and they can fight or they can flight. And Effie fought like a mofo from the moment she had a diagnosis. I saw an instant change in her and it empowered her. All of a sudden, she had an idea what Ford was up against. She found a tribe of people, albeit small, and she found her voice and she was loud. And when she found her voice, she became more clear on how I and the rest of her friends and family could make things easier for Ford, for her and Casey, and for all kids like Ford. Over the next five years, I found something I was passionate about, and that was helping my buddy Ford. My husband built Ford a makeshift wheelchair. I worked with a team to fundraise to get him a real wheelchair and a bike. I successfully advocated for Lake Coeur d'Alene Cruises, a company I worked for at the time, to become ADA compliant, which is not something required when you're dealing with the Coast Guard. I built programs so that kids with sensory issues could still go to the North Pole, which was an event that we did within Lake Coeur d'Alene Cruises. And I helped schools write grants to fund more of these programs. When you know better, you do better. And I was determined to do better. I saw the world differently as well. Non-inclusive parks pissed me off. I noticed where there were no ramps. I noticed how hard it was to get a wheelchair to the beach. And when Effie went to fly, I noticed that she couldn't fly because there were so many obstacles in the way for Ford. I also learned to talk to parents and ask them how to interact with their kiddos rather than looking away and telling my kids to be quiet. Being a friend to somebody with a rare kid is a learning experience, and I certainly don't have a roadmap for it. I believe in the beginning, they need you. They need somebody to clean their house, to rock their baby so they can sleep, to prep a hundred meals, which are all things that, that I failed Effie in. But they also sometimes need weekends away where you can get bad tattoos and eat potato chips and drink champagne, and pretend like the world is perfect. And I have the bad tattoos to prove that that I eventually got some of those things. If you're lucky enough, your world will change along the way as well. You will find a world that doesn't do enough research, that charges too much for all the things that kids need to live a basic life. But you will also see so much good and so many people advocating for change. After 16 years in hospitality, I am moving forward, onward and upward, and joining Team Telomere, a position that without Ford and Effie and the ultimate advocate, Casey, I would not have explored. With rare disease, we are all constantly learning. There are so many unanswered questions. And for someone like myself who knows what I'm going to wear for the next seven days and doesn't have a single unanswered email, The unknown is stupid. I don't like it. So support research, support your friends and family, and love on all of the amazing kiddos because they have so many great gifts to offer. Many of you know the beloved Parvathy, mom to Yash and Ira. Here's a story from her best friend, Sir Vidya. Season of hot chocolate, Santa chimes, and that wonderful season of giving. If my memory serves right, It was the Christmas of 2018. My husband and I had invited our childhood friend, Parvati and Krishnan home. I know Parvati since kindergarten. We went to the same school from our kindergarten to the 12th grade back in India. We knew each other by names then, and that's about it. We came to the United States at different times and learned shortly that Parvati and her husband was close to us geographically. We met them and immediately there was some kind of a spark 
that ignited between our families. Our families became chatty and conversational like we knew each other forever. We kicked off that relationship with a bang. We were slowly and steadily kept nurturing our relationship and reviving it. We started meeting each other and understanding where each of our families came from. So while everything was blissful, came that time where Krishnan, Parvati's husband, broke the most devastating news that their older child has been diagnosed with a rare disease. They learned that news just before they came to our house. And as they came home, they shared it with us. My husband and I did not know how to respond. Should we be sad, shocked, perhaps ask questions or give them their space to digest the news? We did not know. Millions of questions popped in our head. And after all this processing in our head, we decided to remain quiet. Rewinding that day back, I remember cooking a storm that day because we did not know what was the right thing to say. And my husband and I decided to be ourselves and let the setback not take over us. My husband and I had a very heavy heart and we masked it and said, we are just going to be there for them. We are families who do not speak every day, but we slowly and quietly followed them on social media to understand the now and then updates Parvati posts about her child. There are million new clinical terms introduced to us, and of course, my little brain did not comprehend them. I started doing the research to understand what they meant and what they endure so I can actually talk to my friend in an educated way. It was a journey of learning and being involved. It brought so much more depth into our relationship. We were loving the investment of time towards this couple and it certainly gave us a bigger purpose to life. Parvati probably does not know what I do on an everyday basis, but she does trust me to educate her on whatever happens in my life and it is absolutely mutual. My husband and I have not openly sympathized with them any day. However, we have tried to stay strong with them during this entire course and will always be. Parvati and Krishna knows that any day if they need something, we will be there for them and likewise. I think it would be such an appropriate moment to mention that in the midst of all this chaos and confusion that is going around in their life, when I keep thinking, how do they keep track of things? And there, she hops on a plane for a day to come and sp spend the entire day with me on my birthday. The least I expected or hoped for. She proved time and again her life is normal and she could bring immense joy on anyone she is around with. Well, I am always in awe of their grit and determination to handle things the way they do. They inspire the world to say, no problem is mighty big to handle by merely living their life every day. More power to this amazing couple. I hope you've been enjoying this podcast. If you like what you hear, please share this show with your people and please make sure to rate and review it on iTunes or wherever you get your podcasts. You can also head over to Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter to connect with me and stay updated on the show. If you're interested in sharing your story or if you have anything you would like to contribute, please submit it to my website at effieparks.com. 
Thank you so much for listening to the show and for supporting me along the way. I appreciate you all so much. I don't know what kind of day you're having, but if you need a little pick-me-up, Ford's got you. Ha, 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 ha.